Yes, we have confirmed from an Israeli official that there have been two U.S. hostages released. This is a mother and daughter from, daughter from the Chicago area. Their names are Judith Renan, Natalie Renan. They were visiting family about a mile and a half from the Gaza border when Hamas attacked. Their family had been looking for them on Facebook. We've also seen some messages of happiness pouring in on social media. Uh, and the Israel Defense Force has estimated that the total number of hostages is over 200. They're saying today that they believe that the majority of them are still alive. Now, we learned about this because Hamas had said that it had released a mother and daughter for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons and to prove to the world that uh, Biden was uh, false in some of the claims that he recently made. Uh, former intelligence officers told us that Qatar has been in instrumental in the hostage negotiations and indeed in the message that Hamas put out. Uh, they said that this was due to some conversations they had with Qatar officials. Uh, Qatar has harbored Hamas terrorists. They are a major funder of Hamas uh, and the U.S. knew that they needed to rely on them for these negotiations. Uh, let's remember that last night Biden very strongly said that Hamas uses Palestinian civilians as human shields and innocent Palestinians are suffering greatly because of this. It's interesting to note that Israeli intelligence uses psychological warfare. They are constantly putting out messages to try to weaken Hamas. And so when this uh, Hamas message comes out to try to prove Biden wrong, one has to wonder if that went into some of his messaging at, as well. So this is a very happy moment, although it's still a tense moment. Uh, these two hostages who were released may still be in Gaza. So my sense is that U.S. officials right now are being really careful. They don't want to jeopardize anything until these uh, this mother-daughter team are back on U.S. soil, Chris. Yeah, nothing for certain until that happens. Um, Sasha, thanks for that live report. Appreciate it. Our Jason Bellini spoke to Judah's sister, who's also Natalie's aunt just days ago. Here's what she shared with him about her sister and niece and the wait for news. So this is a picture about a week before she was kidnapped. That's one of the last photos Saray Cohn had of her 18-year-old niece, Natalie Ranan. The last communication came by text from a safe room in a kibbutz called Nahal Oz. She said that they're hearing shooting out of their apartment, that they're okay and they love us. And that was the last message I heard from them. Natalie is 18 years old. She's from Illinois, visiting family in Israel with her mother. When the text stopped coming, Cohn was anxious but hopeful. At first I thought maybe she ran out of battery or maybe there was a break and they decided to rest a little bit. But after two hours, I felt something was wrong. Hope turned to terror when the family finally made it to the apartment. Natalie and her mother, Judith, were gone. The doors were thrown out, the windows were broken, the personal belongings were still on the floor, but they were nowhere to be found. They weren't there? They weren't there. What did you In a search for proof of life, she, like most families, watches every Hamas video of the massacres. Horrible videos of things being done to people captured there. We went through all of them in order to see if we can recognize either one of them, but we did not find anything yet. Nothing in any of those videos? No. We did see a video of Hamas terrorists bragging and laughing that they took young women. How do you think she's handling this? I think she's terrified, really terrified. It's horrible to think what she's going through. Again, that was our Jason Bellini reporting. And now let's go live to Jason Bellini in Tel Aviv for us. Jason, you had those conversations with the family members. Uh, just really an incredible time. That's right, Sarai Cohen, you can only imagine just how happy and relieved she is. When we spoke with her just a few days ago, as you just heard, she was still waiting for signs of life of her sister and her niece. And she talked a lot about her niece, this 18-year-old young woman from Evansville, Illinois, who just graduated, had come over to Israel with her mother to be at her grandmother's birthday on the kibbutz, and that's when all of this transpired when she was abducted and that entire day that saturday 
Uh, they were trying to find out where she was, where they were located, and it was, it was many days before they actually heard from an official from the uh, Israeli army who told them that they were indeed hostages. And uh, then they were in contact with the FBI, and the FBI told the, the family that there were traces of them. So they were beginning to get signs that they were uh, being held as captives because there are some other families, I'm going to tell you this, that have hoped that their relatives were being held hostage but had actually died and their bodies were discovered later. So this is very exciting news, obviously, for them and for all the people back home. I and mean, there had been just this groundwell of support for them, of people who were just doing everything they possibly could, contacting everyone they could, every official from the embassy to the Red Cross, trying anything they could to try to bring attention to this case. And we don't know the backstory, how exactly this deal was arranged for them to, to leave but and what the terms of this were. But uh, now we're hearing from the prime minister's office that uh, uh, Israel Defense Forces, they're going to be there and it may actually be in progress right now, getting them out of Gaza and bringing them back home. Chris? And Jason, uh, this news will certainly provide some hope, as you said, to uh, some of the other families impacted by this crisis. What else are you hearing uh, from your sources on the ground there in Tel Aviv? Well, I think this is interesting. This will certainly give hope to many other families that are waiting for word. I mean, there are many people who just still don't know to this day whether their loved ones are still alive. Uh, most people at this point know, most families know at this point whether they're, whether it's believed that their relatives are hostages. Um, but one thing we really do, we do know is that there's been a lot of international pressure on the Israeli government to hold off on going into Gaza, on the uh, offensive into Gaza, the ground offensive, to not do that right away, to give time to try to get the hostages out, as many of them out as possible, um, because once the uh, once this offensive begins, and it could happen at any time, um, and there, there's the lives of those hostages could certainly be in danger, and it may be too late to try to get them out through diplomatic means, Chris. Yeah, there's just so much coordination needed uh, for this all to uh, take place. Uh, Jason Bellini reporting live from Israel for us. Thank you and stay safe.